the BBC News at 6 with me, Sam Warrilow. With me, Harvey Ewing. With me, Divna Hall. With me, Aidan Hickey. Our headline today. Stephen Hawking is a worldwide famous physicist, a mathematician, passed away today. He battled ALS for over 55 years, becoming an iconic figure in the process. He will be remembered for his discoveries and theories. Our condolences go to the family and friends around Hawking. We interviewed local scientist, Mr Stewart. Hi, I'm Aidan, who are you? Hello, I'm Mrs Stewart. What are your thoughts on the life of Stephen Hawking? I think he had an incredible life. I think it's really sad that he had such a, a very difficult condition to overcome, but I think he used it to change his life for the better. And I think he was um, an amazing man. I think a lot of the work that he's done has probably shaped the world for future generations. So I think he turned what could have been a real massive hurdle to overcome and he changed it into a real positive. I think he's left a mark. In other news, Donald Trump has kept true to his words because he is still planning to build a 30 feet wall on the southern border of Mexico and the costing has come to 21 billion. The Mexican government officials have started that they will not be paying for the wall so Donald Trump is relying on his Congress. Mr. Trump introduced builders to make a wall that is physically imposing and aesthetically pleasing, but hard to scale even with climbing aids, such as grappling hooks. The eight prototypes that Mr. Trump has had been shown were made of different materials and had flaws, but also strengths. Some were made out of concrete, but most were made out of steel. Donald Trump has, a has been accompanied by border control and will soon be uh, choosing his favourite wall. Although it will take a long time to build, he needs funding from his Congress. If he wants to go ahead with, with his plans, the wall will take three and a half years and the build will, co will cover around 1,500 miles of land. In recent news, Sergei and Yulia Skirpel were poisoned in Salisbury. The UK and Russia are playing the blame game, both sides saying they'll take further action against the other, with the UK banning Russian media. Some theorists say that Sergei wasn't the real target, but no evidence is able to support that. Mona Lisa Perez, a 19-year-old YouTube star, has been jailed for shooting her boyfriend accidentally whilst filming a stunt for one of their YouTube channels. The stunt involved Mr. Ruse holding an encyclopedia in front of his chest, then Miss Perez would shoot her boyfriend with a pistol. The bullet was supposed to get stuck in the book, and it went through the encyclopedia, and it pierced her boyfriend's chest, which left, which left him fatally wounded. He passed away soon after, and Miss Perez will serve her time in 10-day increments over three years. Now we are going to, over to Harvey with this special report about gaming addictions. Video games can be a good way for adults and children to get out of their own shell and escape the stresses of life. Recent evidence gathered by Razor tells us that games in healthy amounts can help children to lighten depression, increase vision, improve the ability to multitask and improve decision making skills. This sounds good, but gaming is only positive in some aspects, but it is not always the best thing. Online gaming is also linked to obesity, increased depression, poor grades, addictive behaviour and increased aggression or violent behaviour. Gaming addiction is to be listed as a mental health condition for the first time by the World Health Organization. Video games played on smartphones, tablets, computers and consoles should be played for a maximum of two hours, according to researchers. We interviewed Mr. Green, a teacher at Trinity High School, about this subject. Okay, so we're going to ask you a few questions today about g gaming disorder. And um, our first question is, do you think gaming addiction should be classed as a disorder? Um, yeah, I would say so. Uh, I think anything that's kind of an addiction or anything that's kind of having a uh, detrimental effect on someone's life, then that should be classed disorder. If they can't 
or if they feel like they can't physically stop themselves from having that negative effect on their life, then it should be classed as a disorder. Last year, nearly 30 papers were written about the effect of gaming. According to The Guardian, they all opposed the gaming disorder classification. They said that there was a lack of evidence and the researchers paid close attention to the small number of gamers that do have a problem. Social media is having a negative impact on, on a student's self-esteem. According to the Australian Psychology Society, two out of three students feel peer pressure to look good. Sexting, which is sending sexual texts or images, can often cause anxiety and fear that people will think less of them. There are many social media platforms where these problems can occur. occur such as Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat and Instagram. Patrick Wood made this report. Do you think that social media has an impact on teenagers' mental health? I think social media has a massive impact on teenagers' mental health, um, mainly because every teenager has got a social media account. Even those that haven't got a social media account, it becomes an issue that they haven't got one, and so peer pressure kicks in, and then it ends up with everybody having an account the problem there is that any issues that might occur in school, so if students have been bullied or if they've got any concerns about other students and the way that they're dealing with them, it doesn't just go away when they walk out of the school gates. So they can go home and still be contacted by the bullies and still be feeling miserable all the time and all their lives and that's bound to have an even worse impact on their own mental health. So yeah, I think it's quite significant. Okay. With GCSE is coming up over the course of the summer, the question rises once again, are exams putting too much stress on students resulting in mental health issues? According to our sources, exam stress is an issue which has affected a number of students across the UK and has had a huge negative impact on the GCSE grades. A reporter recorded this interview. Hi, my name is Divna, I'm from Trinity High School and I am interviewing Mr Stewart, the Deputy Head Teacher, about exams linking to me mental health. What do you recommend a student should do while stressing about their exams? Number one is to talk about it with somebody, um, somebody that they respect, who will listen to them, so that might be friends, family, teachers, Deputy Heads, they, whoever, uh, Heads of Year, it's really important to talk about it because often talking about it in itself is a really helpful way of, of getting it out there and dealing with it. There are lots of practical things too, like exercise, like eating well, sleeping well, making sure that you get rest times, doing things that you enjoy, trying to keep a context on it so that it's not the only thing in your life, not to become too self-absorbed and, and consider other people's uh, uh, issues as well and that often helps put yours into a context. Now we are going over to our sports reporter, Dan Doody. Thank you, Sam. I'm live from Twickenham Stadium. This year's Six Nations tournament shows a defeated England side desperate for a win at Twickenham Stadium against the Six Nations champions, Ireland. As of March 15th, Ireland stands on sturdy 19 points, while England sits sadly behind Wales on 10 points after defeats to Scotland and France. Hopefully for England, the return of Captain Dan Hartley and winger Ayat Daly will bring good luck against Ireland this Saturday, 17th of March. Back to the studio. Thanks for that, Dan. Now we are going over to Miss Gale for the weather. Hi, my name is Willie Wendy Gale and I'm here inside of Trinity High School in Redditch after the beast from the east has passed. It's a rainy and cloudy start to this morning. There's a thick band of low pressure winds from the southeast with odd spells of rain throughout the morning in the West Midlands. By midday, the rain will continue to fall in patches across Redditch and Bungles Grove with, a high humid with high humidity levels. Going into the evening, the skies start to clear up as we see the temperature drop to a low of 7 with a breeze of 8 miles per hour. Moving into Friday morning, we have a very light rain with strong winds from the southeast. Continuing on the day, through the day, the temperatures begin to rise to 11 degrees with a light rain showers and breezy winds. During the evening, the temperatures begin to drop to a fall with a breeze from east, north, and southwest. Moving on to the weekend, the temperatures begin to drop as a band of low pressure sweeps through the Midlands. Be wary because a yellow snow warning has been issued with warnings of small power outages 
stranded vehicles and cancelled delays and trains and planes. Back to you in the studio. Thanks for that, Miss Gale. Time to get your snow boots on. Thank you for watching. That's it from me, Sam Orlo. From me, Harvey Ewan. From me, Devin Hall. And from me, Peter Piggy.